A component battle has erupted with Nvidia and AMD dropping some strong graphics cards onto a budding market. The 480 from AMD came first boasting premium performance with a relatively low price tag. In a retaliation salvo, we have had the GeForce GTX 1060. MSI UK have been kind enough to equip me with a GTX 1060 Gaming X edition, and so let's have a look at the slightly classier version of the budget card of this GeForce generation, whether or not it's worth dropping into your build. It takes two slots, is 140mm tall which is slightly higher than the Founds edition due to custom PCB, and is 277mm long. If it's fine in my mid tower but users with a small form factor may want to get their tape measure out. Comparing it to my old GTX 970, because the heatsink hangs further than the PCB, they're actually an identical length. The aesthetic front cover over the heatsink is quite a sturdy plastic material with different textures on each section. The centre is almost like a skin texture, whilst the right fan's cover is matte and the left fan a glossier plastic. The left hand side is a slightly quirky ruby colour, and it really is an offensive red. Each fan also has the centerpiece of the MSI Gaming Dragon, which is quite nice. For me, I like the design, but it will really depend on the colour scheme you're going for in your case. The backplate, however, is sturdy and something of a subtle beauty, which I think would fit in anywhere. Sporting a grey dragon and scale like holes which double up as a heat dissipation solution, with black finish over the metal, it oozes premium. The PCB is a custom six phase design and being black nice to look at, although it is mostly hidden under the hood of the backplate and heatsink which covers the front almost completely. MSI boasts military class 4 components, meaning everything is relatively high quality. Importantly there is an 8 pin power connector rather than the default 6 pin for higher power capabilities to overclock. There are LED streaks on the front which light up red, they can be set to pulse or flash or stay solid in the gaming app, and there is also an MSI logo on the top that can be lit multicoloured, to better match your colour scheme. However, honestly I think it is a bit of a token effort and the LEDs on all the 10 series aren't their strongest feature. And as always with looks, if you're like me with a closed case, it won't matter all too much. I thought I'd just briefly mention the box it comes with, it is coated in a plastic over the cardboard which makes it sturdy and also makes the graphics on the front pop out. If you're a trophy hunter who has a cabinet filled with tech, this might make a good centerpiece. It has a base clock of 1599MHz in overclock mode, or 1569 when not. With a built in boost of 1809MHz frequency in overclock mode, this card pushes the boat out from the fans edition with roughly 100MHz up on their boost frequencies. It is also one of the highest factory clock settings among aftermarket cards, and is easily overclocked with the MSI afterburner tool, which I've got roughly an extra 100MHz from so far. It's also equipped with a respectable 6GB of GDR5 memory at 8GHz or 8.1GHz in overclock mode. One big bummer of the 1060 cards is there's no SLI capabilities, meaning that it will always be a single card solution. Which when heading against the 480s does mean that there is some future proofing on the MD side. However as a more budget card it is likely most people will be using it as their sole driver in their budget builds. And if you're like me you'll be upgrading and selling your old card eventually in the future. The Twin Froza 6 cooling system is the pride and joy of MSI. This card sports Torx 2 fans designed to maximise airflow with their curved design, scooping air down onto the chip and vital components, and MSI boosts higher fan air pressure and better cooling in general. However, for the most part, the fans on the GPO haven't been spinning at all, and that's all due to their Zero Froza feature. Basically, unless the card reaches 60 degrees centigrade, the fans will not rotate. Even in games, the fans didn't always spin because they weren't getting hot enough. And that is with the overclock boost in use. This could be due to the 8mm copper squared heat pipes, the solid nickel plated back plate with the almost scale like hole design for maximal heat dissipation, the further cooling material that goes over the memory and MOSFETs, and either way I can't deny that MSI have got something seriously right with their temperature control. The highest temperature recorded was only 64 degrees C and this was with the GPU at 100% load using the Thermark and Combustor burn-in tests. At this 100% load, at 64 degrees C, the fan only went to 30% rotation, which is still almost silent. I don't have the tools to measure the decibels, but for comparison, I was still able to hear my Noctua P12 fans hooked up to the case over the 1060, which are required to begin with anyway. With close to 100MHz overclock, I only saw the temperature rise 1 degree to 65 degrees maximum on the burn tests, which did not increase the fan speed. 
In short, the calling solution on this card might be one of the reasons you pick it over the competitors. With silence most of the time, it is a massive plus for a YouTuber like me who wants to eliminate background noise. And for those thermophobes, the low temperatures even at max loads might be enticing. There's one DVI-D slot, one HDMI slot, and three Display 1.4 slots. This is where I got a little caught out. I have an older monitor without a Display 1.4 support, so I've been limited to two displays over three, unless I get a cable. You might just want to check your monitors, especially if three or more, but there are plenty of slots there. So, with all of the physicalities out of the way, how does the MSI GTX 1060 perform? Just to note, I use Shadowplay to record the ends of some of the benchmarks for the scores, but if there is footage of the benchmarks taking place, it is purely for the visual experience and Shadowplay knocks off around 4-8 to eight frames. I also played a few games with the overlay that didn't have set benchmarks, so it is worth noting that frames would be slightly higher without testing. Also, I've been testing solely in 1080p, and lastly, all benchmarking and testing was done on the default overclock speeds. My current rig consists of the Intel i5-4690K overclocked to 4.1GHz, 16GB of 1866MHz, Kingston Predator RAM, MSI Gaming 5 motherboard, and the full specs will be listed in the description. I tested it on several benchmarks. First we've got the Valley and Unengine benchmark where it got an average of 67.3fps on extreme HD settings. On Heaven benchmark we got an average of 88.4fps at maximum settings. 3D Mark's Firestrike showed 63 FPS average on GPU test 1 and 53 on test 2. TimeSpy had 27.5 on test 1 and 24 on test 2. Obviously these are stress tests, but also worth mentioning is that when comparing to other results with the same card, other users were able to push their cards further and got higher results with overclocking. Taking it to video games, which realistically are the real-world tests of the GPU, Far Cry Primal on maxed out settings gave an average FPS of 64, dropping to a low of 51 and high of 76. At high settings, the average was 84 FPS, not dropping below 67 FPS. I decided to test the ultra settings in game and recorded via shadow play. The results were roughly 60 FPS in action and fighting, which actually occurred mostly in the camps and in the open. However, drops to roughly 50 FPS occurred mainly in the dense vegetated areas of the map, rather than the spots of action. Without a benchmark, I played Battlefield 4, and unfortunately Shadowplay decided not to record the FPS counter, but the lowest FPS I saw was 80, and this was caused by smoke grenades. Most of the time, the FPS was jumping between 100 and 120 FPS at max settings. I think this is quite a good indicator that the 1060 will be equipped for a solid FPS in Battlefield 1, as I don't think it is a huge graphical leap. Most of my subscribers are here for Planetside 2, so I couldn't leave it out. Something I want to mention though is that there are current performance issues that the developers are working on, with lots of community reporting frame drops since a recent patch, and that's all, sometimes up to 10 to 20 FPS have dropped. However, in Ultra, I was able to keep a fairly steady 60 FPS and higher in some hectic scenes, with tanks, air, and lots of infantry on the screen. Either way, it is a jump from the 970 performance where I couldn't activate decent shadows or foliage. I think that once the performance is ironed out completely, it would easily accommodate Planetside 2 at 1080p without much bother. The Gaming X Edition comes in at a regular retail price of £299 with VAT, which is quite a chump, but for the performance rivaling the 980, the previous flagship card, not massively unreasonable. Currently hovering at the same $299 is comparatively a better price in the USA. Against the run of the mill aftermarket 8GB 480 for going 240 upwards in the UK, its main competitor, you might want to ask yourself whether high performance in most DirectX 11 games, but perhaps not a strong DirectX 12 performance in all games, and questions about AMD's Vulkan API will mean it is the card to be your daily driver. With most games being DirectX 11 at the moment, it is definitely the card of the now. So, after all that, is the MSI Gaming X the 1060 for you? Well, this particular MSI version is fast, it has headroom to do some overclocking, and great calling and components to do it with. For a YouTuber like me or a streamer, the silent running is extremely important, and honestly the calling solution is very impressive, and maybe a big draw to you over the competitive aftermarket 1060s. Either way, it is up to you whether or not the style fits in with your build, but I would give the card a strong recommendation to anyone who has the budget and likes the style. Thank you very much for watching. What does everyone else think of the 1060? Would you be likely to upgrade to put one of these in your build? And what did you think of my first real tech review? Subscribe for more content, and until next time everyone, Joshino.